You guys really loved the last video I covered on this topic. Much has changed, so here's the updated 2024 version of the best settings to provide you a tactical advantage. And this is what it looks like. Yeah, it's kind of crazy how clear it looks. Now, disclaimer, these settings are strictly for a tactical advantage, and it might not look the nicest, but they're the best for giving you an edge over other players. And if you want a balance between performance, visibility, and good FPS, stick around to the end because I'll be covering that last. But for now, if you don't care how the game looks, just follow along. Starting off with the game tab, we're going to ignore everything in here apart from FOV and head bobbing. Head bobbing, you can turn this all the way down to the lowest. And when it comes to FOV, this is something you shouldn't sleep on. It's very important. When your FOV is high, you get a wider peripheral vision, less camera recoil, but worse eye relief. And when your FOV is low, you'll get a smaller peripheral, more camera recoil, but better eye relief. And it's a bit easier to get accurate shots with a 1x2. So for the majority of people, somewhere in the middle will give you the best of both worlds. There are, however, two main reasons you'd want to put your FOV higher or lower though. Firstly, if you're someone who particularly struggles spotting people at range, then you want to play on the lowest FOV that you can handle. This will really help bring everything on the horizon closer to you and make it easier to spot people. And secondly, if you're someone who prefers to use scopes most of the time, you'll find that playing on lower FOV will greatly help the shadowing around your scope eye relief. Okay, let's go through the graphic settings now. Resolution, you want to play on your native res. Aspect ratio, 16 by 9, or whatever native is. Screen mode, you always want to use full screen. And the texture quality, you want to go high, medium, or low, depending on your PC. High or medium will make the game look the best though. Shadows, always on low. LOD quality, you want this on at least 2.5, because this affects at what range PMCs render in. I'd recommend turning this up as high as your PC can handle and that you're happy with. Uh, personally, I usually go 2.5 or 3. Overall visibility, this doesn't really affect much, so you can have this on whatever you want. Anti-aliasing, I'd recommend using TAA or TAA High. These other ones will make the image really noisy and sharp and hard to spot people, so personally I prefer smoothing out a little bit first and then adding some sharpness later. If you struggle to run TAA or TAA High, try DLSS or FSR 2.2. HPAO, always off. SSR, you want this on low or medium depending on your PC, sometimes even high. SSR is really important though because it adds reflections into the maps and especially in places like Factory where it's really dark. Turning on SSR can be the difference between seeing down a dark corridor and just not seeing anything at all, so it's definitely worth using. Anastrophic filtering off and the rest don't really matter for tactile advantage. Sharpness is personal preference. I have mine on 0.4, but change it to whatever you like. As for post effects, this is all personal preference apart from clarity, which brightens up the image a bit but most importantly helps outline objects in the fog. And Luma Sharpen, which makes the image a little crispier, brightens it up and helps spotting people in hard to see areas. Adjust them to whatever works best for you as everyone's monitors are different and results will vary. Lastly, the color grading filters. These aren't actually as important as most people think. And if you've optimized your monitor for competitive gameplay, you won't actually get much use out of these. So I will leave these for now and head into the most important settings that are in the Nvidia control panel or whatever your equivalent software is. So in here, you want to go to adjust desktop color settings on the left. Now I just quickly reset Set my monitor settings to default so you can see what my game looks like and it's pretty awful. So going into the control panel we're going to move gamma up to about 2.2 and then I'm going to slowly drag up my contrast until I can see clearly. This is perfect for me in a daytime raid and will help greatly at night too but if you want the best experience at night then you want to turn up your gamma to the max and then gradually increase your contrast again until it looks clear. So basically just the same process but max out your gamma. I never use MVGs in this game for this exact reason. You don't really need them, and besides, MVGs have limitations like range, image quality, and obviously lights. So I'd much prefer opening a video control panel and tweaking my settings for night than enjoy using NVGs. Now we're going to touch on some post effects settings again briefly, because there's some grades in here that can help you achieve similar results to what you can get in NVIDIA control panel. For example, chill wave, turning this up will instantly bring more contrast to your game and help remove that washed out gray look. Clifton will also do the same. So will Montreal and Bread and Jason. These and many other filters can help make the game look clearer. But to be honest, the main reason people use them is because it gives the game a different look, a different feeling, and it can be refreshing to make your game look wildly different. But if you set up your Nvidia settings properly and you change your gamma and contrast so it's more comfortable for you to see in dark or tricky areas, then you won't really gain anything from using these filters. It's just a different look. Just pausing the video to say there is a little bit more to it than that. You could argue that the different color palettes in post effects can be easier on the eye, less work to spot people, and provide you a tactical advantage on another level. And I've actually done a bit of research into this, so if you're interested in specifically the best and most popular post effects people are using this wipe, subscribe now because I'll be releasing that video on the channel very soon. 
and you won't want to miss it. Anyway, back to the topic at hand because that's a whole video in itself. To summarize, there are some filters that can create interesting looks for the game and are much easier on the eye, so you should definitely check them out. And lastly, we're going to talk about the colorblind settings. The main reason I'd consider using this is if you want your grass to actually look green. You don't realize how yellow the game actually looks by default, which is why I've used these settings in the past. Which leads me onto the settings that I actually use and why. Let's get into it. Okay, so these are the settings I actually use, starting with a game tab and then graphics. The main differences here is HBAO and SSR. I turn that up a little bit. Anastrophic filtering on, grass shadows on, and that's about it. So it's just these three and grass shadows. And honestly, they make the game look a lot nicer without ruining the whole tactical advantage perspective. Just be careful when enabling this one, it will make your game look really nice. But again, it will ruin your tactical advantage a little bit, which is why I prefer to use high performance. It's somewhere in the middle and it makes the shadows on my gun and you know the trees and everywhere in the whole terrain. It just adds more depth to it. It looks less flat. Again, it will ruin your tactile advantage, but hey, it looks nice. And post effects, this is what I use. I use a bit of a funky one called Ow, and this squishes the blacks, increases the highlights, and adds a bit of a blue filter. Again, this one's not good for tactical advantage, but I just like the way it looks for recording. Outside of post effects though, it's really up to you how you want your game to look. But I would say the most important thing is your NVIDIA control panel settings and setting up your monitor correctly. Make sure you can actually see, make sure you've got enough gamma, make sure you can see in the darkest of areas. It might ruin the immersion a little bit, but you want to die to another rat in a bush or a dark corner, or do you want to see them? Okay, that's everything, guys. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Oh, and if you have any more questions about settings, come hit me up live on Twitch. Link on screen now.